The initial video got a little long, so I broke it apart. So this is part two, but if you haven't yet, check out part one to find out about the YouTube and Amazon Prime shows. So now I wanna talk about Netflix. And even though I've talked about, you know, the other two platforms and the shows that we enjoy on them, Netflix is primarily the one that we go to for our educational shows. There are so many great programs and shows on it, and some have just come out this year, and they're just excellent. So by and large, this is where the chunk of our shows come from, and they cover such a wide range of areas. So again, I'm gonna to try to break it down into categories of science, countries, as well as history, and then a little bit of the extra, you know, arts, animals, uh, those type of shows as well. So on Netflix for science, there are so many options, whether you want to look more at cartoons or like a real life experiment lab type setting. So the girl's favorite science show on Netflix right now, and this changes all the time, but as of right now, their favorite one is Netflix new show, Emily's Wonder Lab. And this is just such a cute and neat show. If you don't know anything about it, the host or the main person on the show is Emily. And every episode, she has different kids come out and they are doing hands-on experiments to learn something. And she explains, you know, what it is that they're learning about. And then at the end, gives you an at-home version of the experiment. But the way the show's set up, it's really bright and colorful. There's music, everybody's dancing, and they have the kids kind of saying funny things throughout. Now, some people think it's like corny and it's a little too over the top, like happy and energy, but my kids love that part of it and I think it's cute too. But what I think is so cool is that the main woman, Emily, you know, she's talked about the fact that she went to all these different networks trying to put this show, you know, out, trying to get it picked up. And people said, no, like a woman can't do this show. Kids aren't interested in seeing a woman lead this science type show and you know, all this stuff and kept getting shut down until she finally got this chance. And you know, she's pregnant on the show and she's talking about how awesome it's gonna be for her daughter to see you know, a woman leading in science and finally doing these type of shows. So all of that to say, it's a really neat show. It's very high energy, it's very colorful. All of my kids enjoy it all of the ages and we've done some of the experiments at home too like the oobleck on the show we did that at home and it was so much fun so definitely check out emily's wonder lab and a lot of it ties in really nicely as well with level two science topics if you are doing torchlight level two the rest of the science shows are more cartoon animated and these are ones that we've been watching for years they travel well through the ages and they're just always hits in our house so the first one is the magic school bus rides again so it's not the original one. They have that one too on Netflix, but my kids watch it and they're kind of like, eh. I mean, they watch it, but it's just not as impressive to them as the Magic School Bus Rides again. But it's just like the classic from when we were kids, but just a little flashier in how it's presented. But as always, you know, it's a really good topic. They delve into the science and I mean, it's just a really, really neat show. The next one is Ask the Storybots. And again, I know I keep saying this, but it's just a really neat show. So the premise behind this is that a kid is asking some type of question. Like for example, how do volcanoes work? Or what is the internet? How do computers work? Or how does your brain work? Those type of questions. And there's these little story bots. I don't even know how to explain them. They look like little peg people. That probably sounds really strange. I don't know, like little shaped things, but they're story bots. So they're asked this question and they go out to explore to find the answer. And you'll notice like there are a lot of cameos in there that parents will recognize the people who are acting and you know stepping in and they're pretty funny at times but they have kind of like the real life person coming in mixing up with the animation and tracking it through the end to get your answer and then they present the answer in a really fun video at the end that's really easy for kids to understand and then mixed in with all of that they have some kind of fun songs and silly stuff that doesn't necessarily go along with that topic but still really informational. And I think there's a couple seasons of it. I hope they come out with more because it is just a really, really good educational program that parents will actually enjoy watching too. And you'll get some of the references and some of the silly stuff. And it's one that you can sit down and actually watch with your kids and maybe even learn something. I mean, I did, so there's that, <laughs> but we like that one. This next one was my girl's favorite show last year, and they still really enjoy it this year. It's just not quite Emily's Wonder Lab to them, but that is Earth to Luna. So in this one, again, it's an animated show with the girl as the primary character, and she has a little brother and a pet, like Weasel or something. I don't know what it is, Weasel, Ferret, something. 
but they are trying to answer some type of question each time. So she comes up with wanting to know something. There's this cute little song and they go to explore and find the answer. And typically, you know, they become, you know, characters or somehow they change and they get inside to learn whatever it is they're trying to figure out. Then at the end, they put on a show for their parents to explain, you know, what they learned and how they figured it all out. And it's a cute, quick show that delves into some answer and explains the science behind it with fun music and just a really also neat relationship between siblings and showing how they, you know, work together to figure it out and then put on the show at the end for the parents. And it's a very cute show. Now, it did go off Netflix at one point, somehow between this year and maybe two years ago but it's back now. I don't know how long it'll stay again. So you'll want to check that one out pretty quickly. And I think there's only like one or two seasons. It's an older show, but an excellent show. And then the next one that doesn't necessarily teach a whole lot of science. I mean, it definitely has some in it, but it's kind of funny and it's the new alien TV show. And I'll put this on just occasionally when my kids just seem like they're being tickled by everything and they just need a moment to just like laugh and get all their giggles out and they think the show is hilarious and there's not a whole lot of like dialogue or talking in it but it's the aliens trying to figure out something in the human world like one episode was trying to figure out how a bicycle works so you do learn a little bit of science but it's kind of that slapstick type comedy and I mean, I roll my eyes at it, but my girls really like it. And every now and then, like you need something like that where they can just be silly, like laugh hysterically, and then you can jump back into homeschool. So this show is kind of good for that. And moving on from science, well, this one is actually kind of science and animals and places maybe. So maybe it falls into all the categories, but that's the cat in the hat. And we've been watching this one since Elena was in kindergarten and I can still find episodes of it that tie into kindergarten level one and level two. And she has learned so much from these cat in the hat episodes. And I didn't really know what to expect in them. Like when you think of the cat in the hat book, it, it don't, you don't really think like science and learning and, and all of that, but it's done really well. And you know, she has learned and retained so much knowledge from this. I'm talking that we go places and she starts randomly talking about, uh, I don't know, bees and like in-depth information on bees or some type of tree. And I'm like, how do you even know that? And it's from Cat in the Hat. They really do retain it. And it's a very cute and informative show that again, if you have a wide range of kids, you know, they're all gonna like it, maybe take away different things from it, but you know, it'll be something that they can all sit down and enjoy together. And then two other shows that we've watched a lot that tie in really to level K and level one, I would say primarily those two for Torchlight, Ollie and Moon is a really cute show about two little cats, I think they are, but they travel around the world. So this is one where you can find an episode pretty much for any country. And it's similar to MOOC that I talked about with YouTube, but you know, they're going in, they're going to this country, they're learning, they're doing something. I would say that it probably doesn't give you quite as much information as MOOC does. It's a little bit more of a fun show to watch, but you're still getting to see it and they're still picking up pieces of it. And you know, they will retain stuff from that when we then stay in the country, if we come back to it later, they'll remember stuff, or my girls will at least, from Ollie and Moon. And they really like watching that show to tie into the country. Then the other one is Just In Time. And on Netflix, for some reason, there's actually two of these. There's Just In Time and then Just In Time Go. And they'll come up as separate. So if you're looking for them, you have to look for both of them, but they're the same show. But every episode of this is them going back in time usually. And it could be to a different country or just a different time period or historical point in time. And they're learning something or they're doing something in it. But it's tied in nicely when we're talking about these different countries or different time periods you know to get to watch the show and actually see some of that and see him whether it's the dress or the food or the culture or whatever it is you know they're getting to relate that back to what we've been learning about and again that's an animated one where it's mostly a boy and his pet and it's like a girl that comes in as kind of the narrator or guides them through as they go to these different time periods in each episode but that's another one that I highly recommend and definitely you can correlate it and pick which one will match the week that you're in if you're doing Torchlight. So then talking about different time periods, there's another one that we really like for history and that's the Who Was Show. And with this one, you'll actually probably find some that also tie back into, again, guess what, Torchlight. But with some of the people that you're studying in Torchlight, they do have episodes on them. But in the Who Was Show, 
it's where a group of kids are going in and they'll usually feature, I think, two people per episode, but they will dress up as the character. They'll present the facts about them, but they do really funny skits. They do a lot of dancing and songs. It definitely has some silly elements in it. And at times, I mean, the humor can be like, I don't know, a little like passing gas type stuff, like that type of humor. But I mean, my girls think it's funny but they've really learned a lot about these characters. And even today, like they still talk about like Marie Antoinette and what they learned about her with that show and they will reference back to that show with it. So we enjoy watching that actually as a family even. You know, I've learned some stuff about some of these characters I didn't know, but it's so well done that it's very engaging. You know, it's fun. They like to get up and dance with them when they're doing the dancing at the end. And I do like how it presents both the boys and the girls it's a lot of different people from different historical times and it seems to be kind of a nice wide range of it and we haven't watched all of them yet but so far the ones we've liked we've really enjoyed and I would say that that tends probably towards your older group so my five-year-old she likes to watch it for like the dancing kind of the silliness but I don't know how much of the facts she's retaining but definitely my seven-year-old does and she loves that show. Then one that actually is geared a little bit younger and it's math focused, which I don't think I've covered any that have been math so far, is Monster Math Squad. Now all my girls have enjoyed watching it, but I mean math wise and conceptually what it's about is you know below Elena's math level, but she still likes to watch it because it's monsters and colorful and cute. But it's actually really good for my five-year-old, even my two-year-old, like introducing the numbers and getting them thinking through, you know, addition and it's the fun, colorful monsters doing it. And all in all, I mean, pretty good math show. I haven't found much that really seems to tackle like mathematics and even English. It's mostly been like science and art and animals that I've been talking about. So it is nice to have this option when I want to put on something that's you know, more math focused for them. Then these next two aren't necessarily what you might think when you're thinking of educational shows, but again, my girls have learned a lot from them. The first is Motown Magic. And what I really like about this show is that it uses different songs and it kind of ties the episode around these songs and these lyrics. They're getting exposure to different music they might not have heard before. I just really like the characters, the families, the topics they cover, and then the music. I just think it's a really, really cute program. It's more probably entertainment, but it, you can technically maybe say it's got a little of the educational piece with the music and kind of the arts and colors and drawings. But I mean, I definitely think it's worth checking out and it's just a fun one to watch. Then this show is another one that's pretty new on Netflix. And it again is one of my girl's top favorites and that's Izzy's Koala World. And even though it's about following this girl in Australia and it's really cute, they're looking at the animals and the koalas. It also really does teach from an educational standpoint about wild animals, how they're hurt or what happens when they're hurt, how to take care of them, how to rehabilitate them and let them, you know, lose back in the wild. And it teaches a lot about koalas, but my girls love this. They have been acting like they're koalas since watching this. They're climbing trees and acting like they're koalas in the trees. They carry each other around. They talk about how to help koalas, all the facts they've learned about koalas. So this show is just excellent and it's really really cute and again you've got this main girl i don't know how old she is but i'm gonna guess elementary maybe fifth grade i don't really know actually but you know she's the one who's narrating this and doing all of this work or experiments or figuring out how to help the koalas you know under her mom's guidance but it's neat and it's empowering to see and my girls just adore this show I actually watched the whole season twice already so I'm sure we'll probably be watching it again as well. And then these last two are really geared more towards the younger level. So while my two year old will watch some of these other shows, I mean, these two she's really engaged in. And the first is Octonauts. We've been watching that show for forever in our home, but sometimes I forget about it. But you know, it does do a really good job of teaching facts and information about aquatic animals and the way that it's portrayed and the little animals jumping around and the main characters and the colors. You know, my two year old loves to watch it. And then my older still do actually get information from it. The last one is not even educational. I'm just throwing it in because it's so cute, but it's Mighty Little Beam. And what I really like about this show is that it doesn't really have a lot of dialogue. So when you need those moments of just kind of quiet, maybe they want to watch something, but you don't need all that chaos and the talking. I like to put this one on and my girls laugh hysterically through it. Like even my older two, well, actually probably my five-year-old. I mean, she was just cracking herself up at this show. She thought it was hysterical. And my younger one really likes to watch it because it's about a baby, but it's well done and they're pretty short. 
and like I said there's not a lot of dialogue you really have to follow the story and kind of make it up as you go but I really like that show and just wanted to include it here as well because I do think it's so good so those are our favorite educational shows on YouTube Amazon and Netflix and you know there are just times where you need to have some options and you need to have something to turn on to distract your kids or to supplement with something I mean it's just realistic for us we need some screen time sometimes so I love that I have these shows that I can feel comfortable and not feel quite so guilty if you will which I don't really anyway but some may about letting your kids watch them because they're gonna learn something and they're just such positive characters in them that we really enjoy all of them so let me know below if you guys check these out, which one that your kids really like. And if you know one that I haven't mentioned here that your kids like, make sure to put it down below so that I can check it out too. Please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, you can click the button below to subscribe to my channel and make sure to check out the rest of my videos. Bye everyone.